Coach, we're ready to start. Awesome. All right. Well, good morning. Good uh, good sunny morning to uh, everyone here that's in that's in Morgantown. Beautiful day out. Uh, thanks for being on with us today. Um, a belated Happy Mother's Day. I thought our communication and and creative department did a great job, and and our players would be commended as well for for sharing some of their personal feelings toward their mom. And I thought that was really really well done on Mother's Day. Um, it's been nine weeks uh, since our last um, team activity in in our facility. That was March twelfth. Be nine weeks from tomorrow. Uh, eight weeks of us for uh, operating remotely. Uh, we maintain a, a consistent approach through this through this entire eight week process it's three priorities uh, and you've heard me talk about them. number one's health and wellness of our players number two is a routine and a schedule and number three is a culture of accountability and the things on that routine and schedule are academics nutrition uh, meetings and then things that are non-mandatory that we're that we're hoping and encouraging them to do are workouts and position work um, our spring semester finished last week uh, I feel good about uh, how our guys did academically, eagerly waiting those grades. Uh, a lot of credit to Brittany O'Dell and her staff. They were tremendous as far as organizing tutoring sessions and advising our guys throughout. Uh, graduation this week uh, won't be a normal graduation, but it's it's still a huge accomplishment nevertheless. Congrats to all our guys. We got a detailed list. Uh, we're going to do several things on our social media platforms um, this week at the uh, on Saturday. Um, and leading into Saturday to really commemorate those 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 guys, and then when we're able to have person, um, when we're able to get our guys back on campus, we're going to do something special for them as well. Um, I, honestly, the last two weeks have been tougher on our guys than probably the previous six. Um, you know, we're at a point where we really need they need something to look forward to. So much of their days and um, really year long calendar is structured. And as we finished up that last semester, um, you know, we're looking forward, for, forward to a date. And uh, hopefully that's coming in the near future. Hard week last week for our staff as well. Um, you know, uh, Shane announced the, the furloughs and the salary reductions. Um, I'm not going to get in and discuss that, but it was. It was a tough week for our staff last week. And it's been a, it's been a harder two weeks for, for our players as well. Um, last week, we also announced a partnership with Jeremy Darlow. Again, I thought our, our communication staff did a great job with that, giving details about that. I'm excited. Uh, I think it's great for our players. We're trying to get in front of the NLI. Uh, that's inevitable, in my opinion. Uh, we'll also be, re be releasing in the next week or so details about um, our fifth quarter program. I know you've heard me talk about it. Um, we're going to do a release and give you some details. Um, I'm not going to get into it today, but – really give you some detailed information and then we'll, we'll meet back to discuss it further. Uh, continue to be, I continue to be cautiously optimistic about playing football this fall. Uh, I think the state of West Virginia, um, led by Clay Marsh, has, has done a, a really good job in, in the emphasis here of our reopening. Um, so, and I, I, like I said, I remain cautiously optimistic. Uh, we're waiting for the Big 12 Conference um, under the direction of Commissioner Bowlesby, who I think has been a leader throughout this whole uh, pandemic, and then the Football Oversight Committee, which we're fortunate enough that our athletic director, Shane Lyons, leads. So we're looking for direction uh, to provide guidelines. Um, we are preparing, and we've been preparing, uh, for the return of our players. Whenever we get the go-ahead, we will be ready. Um, A.J. Monso, uh, Vince Blankenship, uh, our continue uh, our, our whole athletic department, our football staff, we've been preparing for that, so we will be ready. Um, I know the Big 12 Conference is, is working with a group from Duke University, DICON, uh, so we'll have, we'll have procedures and guidelines in place for, for that return whenever that is. And like I said, we're um, just eagerly waiting um, word from the Big 12 and from the football oversight. So with that, I will uh, I'll open up for questions. All right, your first question here, uh, Coach Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So, Neil, you understand the financial ramifications of, of college football to an athletic department. So, not not just you, but all coaches. Do you feel a pressure that you got to play to to just keep things solvent? Well, I mean, Greg, you're you're intelligent, so you know. I think it, it is it's important that we play during this physical year. Um, 
um, really not going to be up to me to, to figure the pros and cons. Um, I've got to understand that it's really important. Um, I think it's important for a lot of reasons, not just financially. I think um, I think our country needs something to look forward to. Um, I, I'm, I'm more worried right now about uh, our players' um, mental well-being probably than their physical well-being. I really am. Um, I'm not a um, medical expert by any means, um, but I keep up to if I keep up to date to know um, enough about this to stay stay educated, hopefully. Um, but I, I'm, I'm my biggest concern right now is about our about our mental state rather than our physical state. Next question here comes from uh, John Antonic. Go ahead, John. And, and coach, you mentioned this, I guess, alluded to this on the, the thing you did with Pat McAfee yesterday. But you just sense an eagerness and a, a willingness of the guys to get back to some normal routine. You feel the frustration a little bit from them? Yeah, they do. I mean, this is what they signed up for. They signed up to play college football. Um, I think that – and I and I said this kind of in the opening, is they just need something to look forward to. You know, you, you finish that semester, and they're used to having some downtime during this time, but they always know, okay, uh, the Tuesday after Memorial Day, i got to be back. And there's no real clear dates about – when we're going to be back or what's the return to play? Will we play September 5th? So I think we're all just looking for some direction. And let me say this. I think that the powers that are making those decisions, in our case, the Big 12 Conference, the football oversight, I think they're being prudent, and I think it's the right thing to do. If, if I, I'm not in that, in that decision-making role, but if I was in that decision-making role, I'd be waiting as long as possible to make decisions. I think that's the right thing to do. Um, that's been my feeling uh, throughout this whole pandemic is the longer you wait to make a decision, the more information you're going to have. Okay. So right now in, in the college football world is that May 31st date right now, that's kind of end all to, to the guidelines that are in place. And I think the powers that be are going to wait as close to that date as they possibly can to give us some direction to move forward. Next question from Greg Hunter. Greg, go ahead. Neil, um, newcomers have become more vital in their first year in a program. More and more of them have played, and a lot of them can enroll earlier, even in, in June when they didn't used to get into camp until August. So with that said, is this probably going to push back newcomers, their ability to play immediately a little bit? So we got some relief uh, from the NCAA um, within the last couple of days that if guys have a proof of graduation, then they can start joining our team meetings and um, position meetings and things like that. Um, so we're collecting that data. I think the guys mentally, uh, they may be a little bit further ahead from a mental standpoint because we're going to be able to spend more time teaching those guys and they're going to be in more uh, meetings than they normally would leading into a, into a season. So I think mentally they're going to be more prepared uh, physically, they're going to miss, you know, and, and what happens normally is you go through the month of June when our guys get here, the newcomers that did come in January, when they come here in June, there's about a four-week process where we're basically teaching them how to be a college student, how to be a Division One student athlete, how to lift weights, how, you know, there's a lot of teaching involved in that. And then the month of July, we try to assimilate them into our, our normal team uh, group because that during the month of June, they really stay by themselves. They work out by themselves. They're kind of on their own uh, as we bridge them from high school to college. And in July is we really focus on getting them in physical condition and getting them ready to compete against an older group of people. And so I think mentally they're going to be further ahead. Physically, um, you know, depends what they're doing on their own. And, and they don't know what they don't know. So they don't know what it's like to train as a Division One athlete. They don't know what it's like to go against a 20, 21, 22 year old guy. So I think physically there's going to be, there, there's going to be definitely, they're not going to be as further for as far along as in a normal setting. Um, but I think everybody is going to be, is going to be kind of under that same, is going through the same process. All right. Your next question from John, go ahead, John. So another uh, thing that popped in my head here. Um, I know that there isn't a lot of good that's come out of this pandemic, but you guys haven't been over at the, the complex and they aren't doing work there. Um, have you got a feel for the progress that's being made over at the stadium uh, with nobody there? 
Yeah, I haven't been there in, or I haven't um, been near the construction area in about two and a half weeks. Uh, plan to get there at the end of the week and kind of look. Uh, I, that has been a, a positive because they've got more work done. Uh, they've been able to work uh, longer hours. They haven't had to work around our schedule. Um, so not only this phase, but the next phase too, I think they're getting ahead on. Uh, they begin the, the process on the video board. Um, and again, they they have more hours to work. Um, so, so those have been positive. We are, uh, we're on schedule, maybe even slightly ahead of schedule for that project. Um, so they, uh, you, John, you're, you're definitely correct. Uh, next question from Kevin Kender. Go ahead, Kevin. As you mentioned, you were getting into the planning for player return. Once you get a date, do you have a minimum amount of time? Have you like laid out a schedule yet for how long it takes to like reassemble, test, you know, isolation, if there is any, all those kind of things? Have, do you have like part of a schedule in place yet for that, for just like lengths of time? Yeah, that's, that's kind of what we've been working on the last week to 10 days. We're going to try to finalize that. Um, there, there, there's a lot of planning that goes into it, honestly. And there's, um, we're, we're, we're getting uh, kind of best practices from our medical people, uh, from the Big 12, uh, from Diacon, and we're going to put those into, in, into play. Uh, there is, there's a lot that goes into it. We've got a bunch of contingencies. I think it does start with testing. Without, without question, it starts with testing, and, and that's the – that's the things that we're working through this week. Not, not to a point where we're ready to announce those, but the testing piece is, is, is where we start. That's definitely the starting point for staff and player return. Your next question from Mike Kazaza. Mike, go ahead. I'm trying to unmute you here. All right, we're going to go ahead and take Keenan's here. Mike, I'm trying to mute you, but it's not working. Go ahead, Keenan. Neil, I know obviously you guys are not hosting visitors right now and everything's kind of on shutdown. Have you got any clarity yet or any idea maybe about official visitors? I know camps are obviously canceled for June. Uh, is, is June visitors a possibility if the NCAA allows that? Are you planning for that or looking forward to the fall? Or how are you handling it? Yeah, we're just kind of waiting for the – Everything's dead right now until May 31st. Um, my gut is it'll be it'll be dead um, for June. Um, I can see a where it's where I can I can understand the argument. I saw where the basketball coaches association I think it was came out and said through July. Um, I can see the argument there. I think I, I I probably would be surprised if we were allowed to have any kind of recruiting recruiting visitors on campus. Um, over the summer, um, but I, we're not getting into the deep making plans or anything until we learn, learn what the rules are. Um, and I think you have to be careful. You have to be careful during this because you don't want to waste time. Like we don't want to. Like I haven't sit here and gone through a detailed camp plan or a detailed four or six week plan to return to play because I don't want to sit here and waste time on on an unknown because I don't really know what it's going to be yet. Um, and it's the same thing with these official visits. I know I don't – we are not planning to we, – we initially were going to have a huge recruiting weekend uh, in the middle of June. I, we will not have that. Um, but outside of that, we're trying not to make a whole lot of plans just because we haven't been getting, given any indication what the rules are going to be. My gut says there won't be any, but I don't know. All right, let's try this again, Mike. Go ahead. Keenan had my question. That's a conspiracy. <laughs> uh, what do you um, all? working. Uh, Y'all are working together. Y'all are working together. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the the communication you get with your players from day one to now, have you unearthed different or new frustrations or concerns or things that they're encountering that were not present before? It could be just boredom, frustration, anything like that. That's kind of just been exasperated by the situation. The amount of time. Yeah, I just think their mindsets go up and down, and in. And I, and I talked about this a little bit is and I can see in our staff too. Um, and honestly, I, I you know, I, I, it's a, my, my, uh, mindset's up and down too. It's, uh, just so many unknowns you don't know. And, 
every aspect of this profession, every aspect of being a player, there's always, okay, hey, this is next. You know what I mean? Like you finish spring ball, then you got finals, then you get a break, and then you got summer. You get a little break for Fourth of July, and then you got four more weeks. You get a little break, and you got fall camp, then you got the season, and then you got bowl season, and then you got your winter, and everything's planned, and you know what it is. And so it's a real struggle when you take that structure out, and then you can't answer quite you don't you don't know. You don't know. So um I think there's definitely some Zoom fatigue. Um I think. Uh, myself, like a lot of um, probably head coaches in all sports, you fight the battle is what's enough, what's too much. You know what I mean? Like, and so like right now we we have eight hours that we can meet with them football. Well, there's no way in hell that we're meeting for, we can hold their attention for eight hours on football. We're not even going to try. Um, but we are trying to have – Monday through Friday, have some kind of contact with them so we can we do have an understanding what their health and wellness is. We do have an opportunity to encourage them to making sure they're taking care, you know, last week and prior to that, academics, or to encourage them that they're working out. You know, so I do think there's some fatigue of this. Um, I think they're they're itching to get back and get ready. I think for the most part, um, the guys want to play football. Um, which I think is important to note. I think they do want to play. Um, I think they have concerns just like anybody else about, about certain aspects and they have questions, um, but they want to play. All right, go ahead, Keenan. <laughs> Sorry, another one real fast, Neil. Um, how important do you view having college football, especially in a place like West Virginia, just from a lifestyle perspective, where, you know, it is kind of center stage. You know, everybody looks forward to it. How important do you think that is? I, I think I think sports in general, not just college football. I, I think sports in, in general, um, you know, it could be even youth sports. Is I just think there needs to be things that we can do it. So I say bring together, but like we can bring together social distancing. But there has to be something that that unifies um, that gives people something to look forward to. Um, and I think it's positive for the state of West Virginia, positive for our country. We have to do it intelligently. We have to do it under, we have to listen to the medical experts, people that know what they're talking about. Um, I can't even say that word, whatever, wherever that virus special specialization is. Some of you guys are smarter than me. Y'all can say it. I know it starts with an E, but that's about all I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> Monty, you probably know it, but, uh, but I think it's, I think it's huge. You know, um, I miss athletics in my daily life. I'm, I'm talking, take out my professional life. I miss being able to watch um, NBA basketball. Like I, I had a huge, like um, I miss the NCAA basketball tournament. I miss being able to watch uh, college baseball, you know, going, going out and watching, watching the Mountaineers play. Like that's, that's huge for our family. That's great. You know, it's 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 great family time. So I just think that athletics in general, when we get the the go ahead, it's gonna be huge for our country. All right, your next question from John. Go ahead, John. Last one for me. Uh you mentioned a little bit uh beforehand about mental health. And I'm not sure that's something a college football coach would have mentioned when you played uh maybe yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago. Uh, but is that uh, maybe another positive that's come out of this? Is that, hey, you know, we need to, to look at these guys. They're 18 year old kids. Uh, they've got a lot of concerns and things that maybe we're not aware of that maybe are being discussed now a little bit. When I, well, when I was playing, it wasn't that the coaches didn't care, it's that they didn't know what they didn't know. Right, right. It was, it was something that, that wasn't discussed. Um, now, and, and I'll be honest, John, like that is the main. Like when I talk about player health and wellness, like I want to see them on one of these meetings where I can look because I know the kids like, and I can tell something's off and if there's something off, then, okay, let's, let's start asking the questions, you know, all right. Maybe they just woke up and they got on the zoom. So they were late. They kind of look, 
Maybe they lost somebody. Maybe somebody has a virus that they know. Maybe they're having something financially. So that's why that we try to have eyeball to eyeball contact Monday through Friday. And so we can get a good picture of how they're doing. Um, it has little to do with the game of football, has little to do with um, academics, all right? And it has mostly to do with, all right, are they safe or are they well? You know, and, and so I, we just have to be in tune with it. We have to be in tune with it. And I think our guys have done pretty well. We've had issues. I think, I think probably anybody that has nearly 100 people on the roster or in their company or whatever – is is had people had individuals in that organization that really struggled with this and uh and we and we're we're not immune to that we've had staff members really struggle with it. we've had players really struggle with it but i think we've been able to help uh, to this point but it's a it's an ongoing process all right your next question from derek red go ahead derek hey neil um uh, mark emmert was talking to espn yesterday and he had mentioned that he doesn't think that he says that the NCAA wouldn't mandate or oversee a uniform start to sports seasons. And that would be up to uh, state and local health, health organizations. How much tougher does that make any college football coach's job when there might not be even uniformity within conferences based on say, when Texas does something and Kansas does something or Oklahoma does something. I mean, how much tougher does that make, you're, I guess, trying to predict what's going to happen and, 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 and fixing your schedule accordingly when, you know, it's going to really depend on – there's not there isn't going to be one uniform start to anything. Yeah, college football is a, is a different animal because a lot of it is done um, from the conference aspect and then the football oversight committee has uh, a lot of say – in college football, where the NCAA, outside of the rules and compliance, has less. Um, and so, you know, everybody talks about a competitive uh, balance. Um, I don't know if that really ever exists, to be honest with you. Um, and so I think you're going to see some staggered start times. Um, all we can do is, is in West Virginia – what of our state regulations are, whatever our conference, Big 12 conference, football oversight, and what our athletic department and university, you know, Dr. Gee, Shane Lyons, what they give us, what it, what it, when they get, when they say that, that we can bring guys back to our facility on a voluntary basis, we're going to do that. It'll be up to the players, but we're going to do it. We're, we're going to offer those services. When they, whenever we, figure out the return to practice or return to mandatory activity, then we're going to do that. And whenever we can do that, whenever they say we play a game, we're going to do that. And we're going to do that following the best practices that are clearly laid out by our administration, WB Medicine, Big 12 Conference, by, led by DICON. So we're going to do it in the safest, safest way possible for our players. Going to go ahead and give the next question to Chuck Scatterday. Go ahead, Chuck. Epidemiologist is the answer. Oh, there you go. So, so what Chuck probably did? Chuck probably like looked on his phone, asked asked Siri, and then Siri pronounced it for him, so he could so he could sound like the smart guy on this call. Uh, my son-in-law actually has <laughs> background in that. No, <laughs> um, my question uh, focuses on where we've got a uh, Zoom with De Jeremy Darlow uh, tomorrow. Um, you mentioned about your pillars. What was your connection to him? I know the book, but can you walk us through that connection and, and, and what got your eye on him and your connection with him? So, yeah, I'll go back. So, we were at Dita School at Troy. Um, at some point, I got to be careful how I answer this. Right? <laughs> but Adidas made um, a an organizational or company decision where they went into entertainment and hip hop, and then when they did that, um, their brand um, awareness went up, all that kind of stuff in the United States. And so we were locked in on that because we were in a, we were Adidas School at Troy at the time, and so Jeremy Darlow was 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 the marketing person behind that. He wrote a he wrote a book. Um, I read the book, and 
I don't remember if, if I reached out. I, pro- I think I probably reached out to him um, about maybe speaking to our players or something like that. Um, and then through that, we got a relationship started. And um, he wrote a second book, which is kind of the lead into this educational service that he's, that he's offering in, during this partnership. And I was able to read the advance of that book and was able to uh, comment. I think there's only maybe two football coaches that, that uh, I don't know, some of you have written books. John, what's it called when somebody gives you a quote at the front of the book? You pay attention, John. The forward. Forward. There you go. So, I, but I didn't write the three or four page forward, but I was able to give a uh, uh, kind of a quote uh, about the book, and and then we've had multiple uh, conversations when I was at Troy, and then here about branding and how. And then we've had we we had more conversations once the NLI, NLI really NIL excuse me NIL name image likeness when that became clear that it was going to be part um, of the NCAA moving forward we had more discussions and then he created this curriculum and so that's kind of long history long story of how we got to this point and it's something that I'm excited about because it's for the players. Um, all we're doing is we create the partnership. We're offering the service, but it's totally player driven. It's not something that's mandatory, um, but I do think it's something that can really benefit them a little bit during their football career, but mostly post post football career. Uh, next question from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. Coach, you've mentioned that you need to add or want to add a, a an additional player or two this summer, and I sort of assume grad transfers. Um, so the problems with trying to do that during this, I mean, those kids aren't going to be able to visit campus. You can put the regular recruits off a little bit, but those guys are on a fast track. Yeah, that, that's the biggest negative. You're right. We've tried to, in our normal, you know, high school recruiting or junior college recruiting, um, we tried to hold the line. Now, the longer this goes, I don't know how, I don't know if we'll be able to maintain this the whole time, but, the, but up until this point, we've tried to, to hold the line that if you haven't been on campus, you know, it's probably not in your best interest to commit because you really don't know yet. Now, the longer as this goes, we may have to change our thinking and increase what we're doing virtually and all that kind of stuff. But that's been our deal at this point. The graduate transfers aren't going to have that choice. Um, they're going to make decisions uh, based on, um, you know, conversations, virtual meetings, whatever, but they're not going to be an official visit. That is definitely a, um, a negative byproduct of this. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the three more questions here. Um, go ahead, Kevin Gorman. Thanks, Coach. I uh, wanted to ask you about your concerns with the name, in, name image, and likeness uh, talk. And what, what, are, what primary, primarily uh, things that you've addressed with your staff or with your team or with the athletic department that are uh, primary concerns for West Virginia? You know, the concerns is really here, – here's where I – we were trying to pl- plan ahead. That's what the partnership with, with Jeremy was. We were trying to plan ahead. Um, and really, we're focused on education right now. Um, once we get clear direction on what the rules and guidelines are, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Um, so I really can't comment on what my concerns are because I don't know – I don't have a clear picture – because those were just real broad things the NCAA um, introduced the other day. Those aren't really necessarily rules and guidelines. So um, I can't really talk, speak on what my concerns about are yet because it hasn't been clearly stated what exactly it's going to look like for, for our athletes. Uh, next question from Sam. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Coach, yesterday obviously you were on uh, the Pat McAfee show. Um, and you invited them over to Morgantown again. Um, it, it looks to me, at least, that you're really trying to foster, like, an environment of bringing the alumni around, getting them involved in the program. What kind of value do you think that brings to, to the football team? I just think it's the right thing to do. They built the, they built the tradition of the program, <clears throat> and it's whether you're a great player, role player, whatever you were, is I think it's important um, to, to welcome the guys back. You know, 
there's there's always going to be certain things you can't do with them from a compliance standpoint. There's going to be some things you can't do with them from a privacy standpoint. But as far as I'm concerned, is the former players they they help they help build this program. They have a vested interest in this. They have their, they've been, they've invested their time and their and their effort and and they and they should be welcomed back and. That's something we're going to continue to grow. It's it's uh, we're not perfect on that. We have not arrived as far as, um, but it's something that that we're we're trying to continue to build is those relationships and and a lot of our form excuse me a lot of our former players have been great during this time. They did a call that we didn't publicize overly and and that's out of respect to them. Um, we've got several of our guys that jumped on um, position meetings via Zoom and things like that. They've been great. And for the most part, they want to give back. They really do of, of their of their time, and especially with the athletes. You know, I think that's that's the pull as much as anything is to get uh, with the athletes, and and so we're, we're going to continue to try to build and foster those relationships with the hope that they come back more in town. And they and as we build this this program, is I think that they need to ha- there needs to be a source of pride for them. Last question from Mike Kazaza. Mike, go ahead. Word, Neil. The um, something you may not have thought of, or maybe you have. I'm kind of guessing. Maybe like you want to get back and see what things are like. What do you do on like day one? Because you're probably going to have unmatched enthusiasm. But you know, who knows how prepared people are? But I can't imagine you haven't thought about getting started and what that's going to look like. So what the. I think all the return to play models that you're going to, that you're going to see whenever that comes out is you're going to see a window there um, for a lot of medical stuff, Um, whether it's guys being tested. um, I think there needs to be, um, you know, your normal type of testing we do. Um, I think you're going to see maybe, um, maybe even a little bit of a, a, maybe even a stress kind of test to see where where guys are because you're there's going to be less unknowns and there's going to be a shorter window to get people ready. Um, you know, our sports science stuff is pretty advanced. Um, our guys were, were like, if um, some of y'all have seen, the, seen this going to workouts or practice, but our guys wear these uh, mon- heart rate monitors during their workouts and the information is real time. It goes right to – our athletic trainers, our athletic trainers have the ability to pull out uh, anybody out of a workout if their heart rate or any of their vital signs is, if they're even remotely alarmed and I don't ask any questions. Um, so I do think that we have like systems in place to protect and, I, and, and I'm, I'm not naive. We're gonna have differing, different levels of physical conditioning when we come back. We're gonna have guys that, that have gone above and beyond and trained just like they were here. We're going to have guys that have just done okay. And then we're going to have guys that um, have done little to nothing. Um, and I think that's, that's reality. Um, I hope we have few that haven't done much, but I think there's there'll probably going to be some, but we're going to have to monitor our guys. And I think you're going to see a state that you're going to have to see that initial testing and then whether it's length of workouts, what kind of workouts you can do, but I think it's going to be staged um, as far as what you can do leading into that. What are, I think what I, what I think will be a six week return to play. It may be shorter, maybe longer. I have no idea. That's my gut says it's going to be six weeks, but I think if your activity levels is going to be staged. Um, but there's going to be a lot of excitement. You know, I think that there's going to be a new appreciation um, for what they have. Um, I think there's going to be a lot less taken for granted. Um, you know, I think, and this is, we kind of took a, a non-scientific poll with our players. One of their biggest worries and concerns is, um, about a return to play is soft tissue injuries. And so we're going to have to be really, uh, locked in on that, uh, to make sure we're preventing that. And, and that comes in fashion of overtraining, not hydrating, those type of things. I know I gave you a long answer, Mike, but that's, we're thinking, we're thinking through all that. I just think that uh, the sports science piece is going to be big, and then the initial testing you do before you actually have your first workout um, is going to be critical as well. All right, appreciate it, Coach. I'm going to go ahead and send it over to uh, Mike Montoro. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate your time.
want to also thank the members of the media for uh, being on the call today.